Shalom friends and family. I'm Eris Hassan again and today we're going to have a teaching about the battle between David and Goliath. I'm going to concentrate today in my teaching about the Philistines. Now who were these people? We read about them plenty in scriptures. We read about them in the time of Abraham and later on in the time when the tribes entered the land. But the question is, are they the same Philistines? You see, when the tribes of Israel entered the land, coming from the east, crossing through the Jordan River and settling in the land, there was another nation coming from the west. At that time, about, uh, about 3,300, 3,200 years ago, we hear about a lot of nations leaving the area of the Aegean Ocean, perhaps the south of Greece, the area of Crete, leaving that area due to invaders, Perhaps there, at that time there was an eruption of a big uh, volcano in Santorini that pushed the people out, searching for a new home. Now these Philistines, their first goal, their first aim would be Egypt. And why wouldn't it be? Egypt has such a fertile land, a lot of water, the Nile flowing all year long. That's a good place to settle in. I would choose that as well. But the Egyptians at that time were a mighty empire that pushed the Philistines away. Some of them were captured. Eventually, the Egyptians that were in control over Canaan, they allowed these Philistines to settle in the land of Canaan. And they settled on the southern shoreline, building five main cities. Now, three of these cities were uh, on the coastline starting from Ashdod, Ashkelon, where we are now, and a bit southern from here, Gaza. And then they had two big cities further into the land called Ekron and Gath. These areas of settling were amazing. I mean, building your cities right on the shoreline, that meant income. Because you're controlling from here the main trade route coming from Egypt, passing through the land of Israel, heading up to Mesopotamia. Also, settling here on the shoreline promised them trade by boats, by ships. They would have fishing here, food, but also water, drinking water. You see, the land of Israel uh, 60% of it is a desert area. And that means lack of water. At times the tribes had to leave due to the times of drought. Or Abraham and Sarah. But here on the shoreline, you had a lot of ground water. When it rains, the water seeps through the ground and then flows to a low point. Low point meaning the Mediterranean Sea that you see in front of you. Mediterranean Sea in scripture is known as the Great Sea. Now as the water flows underground, the fresh water, it reaches the semi-salty water of the sea, but it does not mix, it pushes away. And in this way, along the shoreline, you could dig deep in the ground, well, sometimes not too deep, and get to the fresh water, to the groundwater. And that promised them a good place for settling that they could survive in. So water food, income from trade, and controlling the main trade route here, that meant taxes. That meant money. And they held on to these places. So, three cities were built right on the shoreline. We're talking about Ashdod, Ashkelon, right over here, and Gaza Southern. And then two more cities deeper into the land, it said Ekron and Gath. Now, the two bigger cities inside the land, they were the cities that would protect the other ones. But even here in these cities, the protection was great. I mean, they had a wall right around them. There was a wall from the northern side, a wall from the eastern side, and also a wall from the southern side. But as we reach the western side where we are now, where we're, where we're filming now, there was a cliff, a fall down. 
So even if enemies would come from the Mediterranean Sea, that was a very difficult sea to pass through, especially through the winter time, uh, they would have a big challenge climbing up and taking over the city. In Joshua 13, verse 2 and 3, it talks about the tribes conquering the land. But we read that here in Ashkelon, as well as in the other Philistine city, the tribes did not manage to do so. It was difficult. And coming here and seeing it with our eyes gives us an understanding why. The protection here was great, and these people were really powerful. Now we read in scripture that these people were terrific uh, craftsmen of iron. They brought the ability with them from uh, Kafto, from Pleshet, perhaps Crete, south of uh, Greece. And we're talking about a time that we're moving from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. And if you know how to use iron, it's your advantage. Iron is a metal that uh, weighs less, better if you're building weapons and tools, you have that advantage. Building chariots, items and chariots made out of iron, you're faster. A chariot is like an ancient tank. All of that gave these people, these Philistines, the advantage against the nations that existed here in the land. And that was a great advantage for them. That's why they were so powerful. That's why the tribes had such a difficult time throughout scriptures against these people. And that's why these people came here to the land, settled in areas that were so good. So family, before we leave Ashkelon, I thought of taking you around, showing you a bit of archeology. span Now this location, this city was an awesome city throughout history. And people wanted to settle here right by the shoreline because all the reasons that we pointed out. So we have here archeology span uh, from the Hellenistic period, Roman period, Muslim period, um, Crusader period, the time of the kings of Israel. And if I'm going back even further to the Canaanite period, meaning to the time of Abraham. Now what we see here is a Canaanite gate around the time of Abraham, maybe 3,700 years ago, that is made out of mud blocks, kind of like the one that we find in Tel Dan. And this gate, this arch, is considered one of the most ancient arches in the whole entire world. And we found it here in Ashkelon. And now we'll say goodbye to Ashkelon, to one of the shoreline cities of the Philistines, and we'll head deeper into the land, to the, uh, to the site of ancient Gath. Let's go. So here we are, family, in uh, Tel Tzafit. In Arabic, it's called Tel El Safi, meaning the pure mountain, perhaps because of the white rock, the chalk rock, soft uh, limestone. Uh, this is considered by some scholars, not all, as ancient Gath. And soon enough, as we head up, we'll see why it was a stronghold, why they wanted to settle here, as well as in Ekron. So let's head up. So friends and family, now we're looking toward the east. This would be the eastern point of the Philistines, building these two massive, huge cities that would be used as fortresses, strongholds, protecting the rest of the Philistines, closer to the shoreline, the trade city against invaders, against threats that exist inside the land. I'm talking about the other nations as well as the tribes of Israel. Now these two huge cities were built as military bases. Here they would train them, the soldiers, from an early age, 
growing, building them as perfect soldiers. Here they would train the horses for the chariots. Here they would build their power. So here, in this buffering zone, is where the Philistines left their two major cities of Ekron and Gath, fighting against the tribes of Israel upon the mountains of Judea and Samaria. From here they left in 1 Samuel 4, the battle of Aphek. From here they left in 1 Samuel 7 to the battle of Ebenezer. And from here they would leave to fight against the tribes of Israel in the valley of Elah against David. In 1 Samuel 13 verse 3 it says, After Jonathan attacked the garrison of the Philistines in Geva, the Philistines came against Israel. Then the Philistines gathered together to fight with Israel 30,000 chariots. 30,000. Each chariot is like a tank. And 6,000 horsemen. And people of the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. I mean, they were many. In verse 19 it says, Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all of the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make sword or spears. But all the Israelites will go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, his axe, and his sickle. Meaning the Philistines had the monopole over iron. If you wanted weapons, you come to the Philistines. If you wanted it sharpened, you come to the Philistines. You needed uh, a tool, you came to the Philistines. And in time of peace, it would happen just down below here. You know what? We even found in the territory of the tribes, in the territory of Judah, tools with Philistine serial number on it to prove it. How amazing is that? In verse 22 it says, So it came about on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hands of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. So this was a big military base and the best soldier was known as the champion, the champion of Gath. And he received the title. The title would be Goliath. Goliath the champion of Gath. So Goliath really is a title, not a name. And this Goliath, this best soldier would go beyond this valley, beyond the hill, tell Ezekah to fight against a teenager, against a boy called David. See you shortly.